Do you want to know what MCAT physics equations you need to know to get a good MCAT score? The chemical and physical foundations of biological systems section of the MCAT can be a challenge, especially if you sit down to take the MCAT unprepared. There are certain physics equations that you must know in order to ace this first section of the MCAT. This video includes an overview of every physics equation that you need to know for the MCAT and our tips for how to effectively use them on test day. Hi, my name is Joseph Kafka, and I'm an admissions associate here at BMO. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. And if you would like us to help you prepare for your MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. And as a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. Here's what we'll cover on MCAT physics equations. How much physics is on the MCAT? Essential physics equations for the MCAT. And three tips to help you prepare for the MCAT physics equations. You may be wondering just how much physics you will see on the MCAT. Your physics knowledge will come into play within the first section of the MCAT, Chemical and Physical Foundations of Biological Systems. According to the AAMC, you can expect approximately 25% of the questions in this section to relate to introductory physics and how they apply to the human body, such as the flow of fluids through the aorta. The AAMC has identified that your understanding of how complex living organisms transport materials, sense their environment, process signals, and respond to changes in terms of physical principles as a foundational concept on the MCAT. Approximately 40% of the chemistry and physics section will focus on this foundational concept and will include the following physics-related categories. 4A, translational motion, forces, work, energy, and equilibrium in living systems. 4B, importance of fluids for the circulation of the blood, gas movement, and gas exchange. 4C, electrochemistry and electrical circuits and their elements. 4D, how light and sound interact with matter. 4E, atoms, nuclear decay, electronic structure, and atomical chemical behavior. And if you want, you can take a closer look at the content categories on the MCAT with the AAMC's guide, What is on the MCAT Exam? There are a lot of physics equations out there, but which ones do you actually need to know for the MCAT? Let's look at each MCAT physics equation that the AAMC recommends you know, broken down by content category. This content category focuses on motion and its causes, as well as various forms of energy and their interconversions. This MCAT physics equation is Newton's second law, which states that the net force on the object is proportional to the object's mass and acceleration. This MCAT physics equation describes the work energy principle, or the work, W, done by a constant force, F, on an object that is moving in a specific direction. In this equation, D is the distance the object moves while the force was exerted on it, and cosine theta is the angle between the force and the displaced object. This MCAT physics equation states that the net work on a system is equal to the change in kinetic energy of a moving object, particle, or system of objects moving together. Kinetic energy is a form of energy associated with the motion of an object. This energy is related to a certain mass moving at a particular velocity. The kinetic energy is proportional to the velocity squared. This MCAT physics equation describes gravitational potential energy which depends on the position of an object. To use this equation, you will need the mass of the object, gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared at the surface of the Earth, and the height of the object in meters. An elastic force is a force that results from stretching or compressing an object, such as a spring. In this potential energy equation, K is the spring constant, and the variable X is the distance the spring is stretched. The spring constant relates to the spring stiffness. This content category focuses on the behavior of fluids as it pertains to the functioning of the pulmonary and circulatory systems. This law applies to static fluids and relates pressure to depth. The pressure in a liquid at a given depth is called the hydrostatic pressure, and this pressure increases as depth below the surface increases. In this MCAT physics equation, capital P is the hydrostatic pressure. The Greek letter rho is the density of the liquid 
G is gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and H is the depth slash height of the liquid in meters. Continuity of flow is a fundamental principle of fluids. Because mass is conserved in a fluid system, continuity of flow also exists. In this MCAT physics equation, A is the cross-sectional area of flow, and V is the velocity. If the cross-sectional area in a fluid system changes, the velocity will change in a way that is inversely proportional in order to maintain continuity. This MCAT physics equation allows you to analyze a fluid as it moves through a tube and relates the velocity of the fluid to its pressure. A horizontal tube that changes in diameter, regions where the fluid is moving fast will be under less pressure than regions where the fluid is moving slow. Bernoulli's equation applies principles of energy conservation to a flowing fluid. In this equation, capital P is the hydrostatic pressure, the Greek letter rho is the density of the fluid, V is the velocity, G is the gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared, and H is the height of the liquid in meters. The ideal gas law describes the behavior of an ideal gas and combines together ideas found in various other gas laws. In this MCAT physics equation, P is the pressure of the gas, V is the volume in liters, N is the amount of gas in moles, R is the universal gas constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. The value of R will depend on the units you use in this equation. Boyle's law allows you to calculate how the volume of a gas will change as the pressure exerted on it changes, and vice versa. This gas law states that the volume of gas is directly related to its temperature at a constant pressure. Charles' law allows you to calculate how the volume of a gas will change as its temperature changes, and vice versa. This gas law relates the volume of a gas to the number of moles within the gas. The volume of a gas is directly related to the number of moles within it. At a constant temperature and pressure, a larger number of moles will take up a larger volume. Avogadro's law will allow you to calculate how the volume of a gas will change as the number of moles change, and vice versa. Dalton's law states that the total pressure exerted by a gas mixture is the sum of the individual pressures exerted by each gas in the mixture. This content category emphasizes the nature of electrical currents and voltages, how energy can be converted into electrical forms that can be used to perform chemical transformations or work. In addition, this content category includes how electrical impulses can be transmitted over long distances in the nervous system. This MCAT physics equation quantifies the force between two electrically charged particles. The electrical force of repulsion or attraction between the particles is proportional to the product of the charges and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This MCAT physics equation allows you to calculate the electrical current through a circuit as electric charge flows over a time duration. Ohm's law relates the current flowing through a circuit to the voltage and resistance. The current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance in ohms. This resistivity equation demonstrates that resistivity of a material, such as a wire, is equal to the resistance of the material in ohms, multiplied by its cross-sectional area and divided by its length. This content category focuses on the properties of light and sound and how the interactions of light and sound with matter can be used by an organism to sense its environment and how these interactions can also be used to generate structural information or images. The energy of a photon within an electromagnetic wave is directly related to the wave frequency. In this MCAT physics equation, H is Planck's constant. Snell's law describes the change in direction of a light ray as it moves from a medium with one refraction index to another medium with a different refraction index. The angle of incidence towards the surface and the angle of refraction are measured relative to a surface normal. Bending of light rays through a thin lens is summarized by the lens equation. In this MCAT physics equation, F is the focal length of the lens, P is the distance of the object from the lens, and Q is the distance of the image from the lens. You will need to know the sign conventions for this equation, or when certain values will be positive or negative. For a convex lens, the focal length will always be positive. For a concave lens, the focal length will always be negative. This content category focuses on subatomic particles, the atomic nucleus, nuclear radiation, the structure of the atom, and how the configuration of any particular atom can be used to predict its physical and chemical properties. 
the AAMC does not reference any specific MCAT physics equations that you will need to know for this last content category. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the number of physics equations that you'll need to know for the MCAT, here are some helpful tips. Remember, you do not need to be a physics genius to do well on the MCAT. Yes, there are a fair number of physics equations that you will need to memorize and thoroughly understand how to utilize for the MCAT, but they're only a small portion of the physics equations that exist in the universe. They're also not the most complex physics equations and generally apply to problems that can be solved in only a few steps. The key is to understand when to make use of these equations and how to use them quickly and confidently after memorizing each physics equation that you need to know, completing as many MCAT chemistry and physics practice problems as you can will help you gain an understanding of how to apply these equations. You just spent five minutes on lengthy calculations and in glancing down at the answer choices, your solution is not among the answers. You start to panic and worry that you just wasted five minutes and you still don't know the answer. Oftentimes a quick unit conversion can reveal the correct answer or you may have simply used the incorrect units in your equation. Understanding how to convert between units and ensuring that you can do this quickly without a calculator is essential for the chemistry and physics section of the MCAT. Here's another great tip. Get comfortable rearranging equations to solve for a particular variable to avoid errors on test day. As you study for the MCAT, you may find that traditional methods for memorizing equations, such as making flashcards, are not working for you. Here are some additional techniques to consider while preparing for your exam. Write the equation down several times on a piece of paper until you can recite it out loud without referencing your study materials. Try to expand an equation into a sentence that explains what the equation tells you. Complete several practice problems that require use of the equation. Try grouping several equations together by topic to see similarities between equations that you're struggling with and ones that you've already mastered. Ask a friend if they've developed any catchy mnemonic devices to remember the physics equations you will need for the MCAT. Remember, truly understanding an equation will be key in remembering it. For any equations that you're struggling with, go into depth for each part of the equation and work to understand how each part works together. You can also try going back in your notes and reviewing any equations relating to foundational concepts that you learned previously. Knowledge gaps in topics that you've already covered may be hindering your ability to learn new equations. If you're really struggling, you can always look into an MCAT tutor. This wraps up our video for today. Check out our blog to learn more about the MCAT physics equations you need to know and how to prepare for your examination. We provide answers to frequently asked questions and more MCAT tips. Be sure to also utilize our MCAT psychology and sociology, MCAT cars, and MCAT biology questions and biochemistry tips specifically geared towards acing each section of the MCAT. And don't forget to check out our foolproof MCAT car strategy. I've included all this in the link in the description of this video so you can find the blog and these resources easily. If you would like us to help you prepare effectively for your MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Speaking of comments, if you have any questions about the MCAT physics equations that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.